Hi, I'm Avner Kreps. And I'm Ben Fira. And this is our Titration Lab presentation. So the main idea of this experiment is to find the molar mass of an unidentified triprotic acid using titrations. Uh, the purpose being to learn about titrations and how to do them in experiments. The hypothesis of our experiment is that it is possible through the titration of a standardized sodium hydroxide sol solution to determine a fairly accurate molar mass of an unknown type triprotic acid, or really any acid. So if one wants to do this procedure, the first thing that must be done is one must create a 250 milliliter uh, NaOH solution using solid NaOH pellets, and it must be approximately 0.4 molar. Then what must be done is the solution must be standardized, and the way to do this is one must titrate the sodium hydroxide solution into a known KHP, or potassium hydrogen phthalate solution, uh, which has a known molarity, and we can calculate the molarity of the sodium hydroxide solution for that trial. Step two must be repeated three more times and then the average molarity of the NaOH solution can be calculated. So then, we know, since we know the molarity of the NaOH solution, we can titrate it into the triprotic solution, triprotic acid solution, and after we do this twice, one can calculate the molar mass for each trial and then find the, a fairly accurate average molar mass of the triprotic acid. On this slide, you can see our raw results. The top data con table contains uh, results that pertain to the standardization of the sodium hydroxide, and the bottom con table con contains results that are pertaining to the um, tests on the acid. So here we have the calculations that we used to find out the molarity of NaOH after standardizing it. Now what we did was we took the amount of KHP that was measured right before we added it into the solution. Uh, we divided that by the known molar mass of KHP. Uh, we divided that, uh, we divided that, which is a molar value, by the amount of NaOH that we had to use to titrate the solution, which we then changed into mil uh, which we then changed from milliliters into liters. And so we found out, so we found the moles to liters ratio for uh, NaOH, which is the same as molarity. And at the bottom, to find out the average molarity of NaOH, we just added up all the, all the molarity of the previous uh, four trials and divided by four. In this slide, you can see our calculations for the molar mass of our unknown acid. Um, you can see that we started out with our number of grams acid we started the trial with, and we divided that by our number of milliliters of sodium hydroxide used to tit that, titrate that acid. We multiplied by 1,000 milliliters over liters to, cal to change our um, volume unit to liters, and then divided by our molarity of hydroxide to convert to a mole to volume ratio. We then multiplied it by the ratio of hydroxide ions to a mole of acid um, uh, neutralization, and then that's going to give us our final value for grams per mole of acid, which is the value we're looking for. To get our average, we added up these values and divided by two. So here we have a graph we created of a class's data for the molar mass of the unknown acid, and we also added in a line that shows lower boundary of the threes test. And what that means is that uh, by using standard deviation, we figured that we uh, figured out that everything below this line is going to be an outliner and as you can see we have one outlier from group 11 while everything else is above the line and therefore it's not a lower outlier and as you can also see the data is skewed slightly to the right uh, off of the last three groups. So one very noticeable thing about our graph is that there is very little deviance in our data and this can be backed up mathematically by the standard deviation being only 5.177, which is very small. We did have one clear outlier, but this outlier was able to be eliminated by the threes test. Um, so our final data was a lot more accurate. And this led to the standard deviation of 5.177. There was one slight inaccuracy or error, is that our data is skewed to the right. 
Uh, now, a possible cause for this is that when students titrated their um, acids, they titrated a little bit too far. They added a little bit more NaOH than they should have. Um, this would have caused uh, an acid, um, an acid uh, grams per mole, molar, molar mass to be reached that's higher than normal. Uh, now, an interesting thing is that this, this lab is a stark contrast with other labs in that it's actually quite precise. Um, other labs have a very high degree of inaccuracy and error. Um, so this could be that there is a very accurate procedure, um, accurate or not much random error, or consistent random error. Now, another thing that's interesting is that since we don't know the identity of the acid, it's actually impossible to determine whether our data is accurate or not, but we can determine that it's extremely precise. And therefore, it's probably either likely that it is accurate or there's been consistent random error. Um, so random error that could have occurred could be a lot of students might have um, dropped a little bit of sodium hydroxide, not into the solution they were titrating, but maybe onto the lip of the bottle or some other human error like that. So as far as future work goes, uh, one thing we can uh, now do is use the molar mass of an acid to determine its identity. We can also find out which pH indicators give the best degree of accuracy during a titration because we only use one pH indicator throughout this experiment, but maybe a different one would be better suited. And that's the end of our presentation. Thanks for watching.